This PowerPoint presentation um, is going to discuss the um, drugs that affect the gastrointestinal system. The gastrointestinal drugs that we are going to talk about, there's nine different categories. There are antacids, agents for ulcers or GERD, gastric mucosal agents, GI antispasmodics or anticholinergics, agents for IBD, antidiarrheal agents, antiflatulants, laxatives, catheterics, and antiemetic medications. Antiacids. Antiacids are used for the treatment of pyrosis, also commonly known as heartburn, or dyspepsia, which is also commonly known as acid indigestion. About 40% of our population suffers from one or the other of these diseases, so these medications are very common on medication lists in the clinic. Antacids are used um, to act against acid. They neutralize or reduce the acidity of the stomach or the duodenal contents by combining with hydrochloric acid and producing salt and water. Examples of antacid are the most common one is calcium carbonate, um, also known as Tums, or some forms of magnesium, such as Maalox or Mylanta. Antacids are used in the treatment of hyperacidity problems, such as heartburn, gastroesophageal reflux, sour stomach, and acid indigestion and in the medical treatment of peptic ulcers. Some side effects of antacids, um, due to the high amount of calcium, um, this can cause constipation. Um, also diarrhea, if you're using a magnesium type supplement, um, this is more common with um, magnesium antacids. And then electrolyte imbalance as we are um, implementing more calcium and more magnesium into the system and is being absorbed, um, electrolytes can be imbalanced by these. Um, antacids, since they are mainly um, of calcium nature, can also cause the formation of kidney stones. Kidney stones are mainly calcium deposits that have accumulated in the kidneys and can be very painful. So if a patient is suffering from kidney stones, um, this is not a highly recommended medication to be prescribed. Caution um, may decrease the absorption of other medications. Um, this is particularly um, important. Um, we want the medications that the patient is taking outside of antacids um, to be their full effectiveness. Um, some medications that are of particular note are antibiotics and um, the uh, digox digoxin, um, a cardiac medication, it can inhibit the absorption of those. Antacids may interfere with other drugs in three um, different ways. They um, increase the gastric pH, which causes a decrease in absorption of um, weekly acid drugs and results in a decrease in the drug effect. So this is how um, it affects the digoxin, uh, fentuin, or isozonate is another um, example. Um, the other way is by absorbing or binding drugs to their surface, resulting in a decrease in the amount of drug being absorbed into the bloodstream, so they can't get through that um, gastric lining. Um, an example of this would be tetracyclines um, and those types of antibiotics. And then the third way is by affecting the rate of drug elimination by increasing urinary pH. Um, the excretion of salicylates is increased, whereas excretion of quinidine and amphetamines is decreased. So there are several different medications that can be affected um, and their absorption um, in the GI tract, so we have to be careful. One um, thing that we usually tell our patients is not to take any other medications within two hours of taking antacids. 
and antacids really should not be taken for more than two weeks unless under some medical supervision or if you've seen your doctor. Um, and we really try and encourage that among patients also. Agents for ulcers and GERD. Um, the main medications um, that are usually over the counter, most of these are over the counter now, um, are H2 blockers. They reduce the gastric acid secretions by blocking the histamine 2 receptors. Um, Drugs of note, um, the most common one at this point is ranidine or Zantac. Flamotidine or Pepsid is also very common. Um, these two were kind of um, prescribed probably equally as much. They have uh, very little side effects um, is the reason why this one is prescribed. Cimetidine or Tagamet used to be the drug of choice, um, but there are a lot more interactions and is really used a lot less than um, its counterparts. Some of the side effects of H2 blockers are diarrhea, dizzy, rash, headache, um, sometimes mental confusion. Um, people who are pregnant or lactating should not take these medications. And um, if you are taking cimetidine, it may increase warfarin, beta blockers, benzos, lidocaine, theophylline, and tricyclic antidepressants. So that's really the reason why we do not um, prescribe cimetidine at this time. All of these drugs end in the ending T-I-D-I-N-E. So um, keep that of note when you're um, trying to figure out which class of medications they belong to. Um, that ending belongs to the H2 blockers. Another medication um, that is prescribed pretty readily uh, for ulcers and GERD, um, most patients will be prescribed H2 blockers first um, to see if this helps their symptoms. If this does not help, then most physicians will move to a class of medications called proton pump inhibitors. They block the last step of acid production by the gastric mucosa. Um, they also you are used in the treatment of H. pylori and ulcers along with an antibiotic. And this one needs to be taken before meals and should be swallowed whole. Um, if patients can't swallow the capsules whole, um, patients can open the capsule and spread the inner contents of the capsule over a food like um, yogurt or cottage cheese of those natures um, to help ingest that before they eat a full meal. Drugs in this class, the most common is omeprazole or Prilosec. Um, this one is over-the-counter and used um, quite frequently. This medication should not be used um, more than 14 days in a row without medical attention or medical advice by a physician. Lansoprozol um, or Prevacid, also over-the-counter, um, not used quite as much. Um, many feel like omeprazole and Prilosec is more responsive and um, treats the GERD symptoms um, better than the Prevacid. Other medications, Propantazole or E-Omeprazole, um, also known as Protonix and Nexium, both of these are um, prescription-only medications. Um, Nexium, while it works really well, um, is quite expensive and um, typically is not generic. Other gastric mucosal agents, we have um, misoprostol or cytotec, um, inhibits gastric acid secretion and protects the mucosa from irritants such as NSAIDs. So this um, 
particular medication sometimes is prescribed to patients that have to be on um, NSAIDs like ibuprofen, um, endomethacin. Um, if those medications irritate the lining and we're trying to reduce inflammation, we will sometimes prescribe this medication to help patients um, cope with that. Um, sometimes um, some physicians will prescribe this medication for um, an off-label reason um, for gastric or duodenal ulcers um, that are not related to NSAIDs, but this is not FDA approved. Um, but some physicians get creative and try, it, try and use this drug for that reason. Some of the side effects are diarrhea, nausea, abdominal pain. Um, and people who are women of, um, people who are childbearing age or pregnant should not take this medication either. The next medication is sucloferate or carafate inhibits pepsin, is administered on an empty stomach and reacts to the hydrochloric acid in the stomach forming a paste which adheres to the mucosa, thrust protecting against any irritation. Um, this medication needs to be taken at least one hour before meals on an empty stomach and not within two hours of any other medication. GI antispasmodics and anticholinergics. Um, Antispasmodic medications uh, help calm down the bowel by decreasing the motility. And we usually use this medication in the treatment of um, irritable bowel syndrome um, in severe cases. A lot of times uh, physicians will try and tell patients to alter their diet before we're prescribing these types of medications. Um, so it's really important to do patient education on um, fiber diets um, and um, reducing those medications that might irritate the bowel, those high in acid or um, spicy foods, those sorts of things. Agents for Inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease is um, inflammation of the lining of the GI tract. Um, some examples of this are Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Um, drugs, salicylates, designed to reach the colon and the il ileum, so it skips over the stomach and the duodenum um, and goes um, straight to the colon part um, where um, most of these problems occur. A good um, example of this medication is mes mesaline um, or Rowaza. Sometimes glucocorticoids um, such as prednisone or prednisolone are prescribed. And these medications both, both types of medications reduce the inflammation in the bowel. Anti-diarrheal medications reduce the number of loose stools. Um, our most common is Pepto-Bismol, which is over-the-counter. This should not be taken any longer than two um, days. Um, patients should um, take uh, should be on the brat diet, so bananas. Um, rice, applesauce, and um, toast, preferably wheat toast that has a higher fiber content. Um, and then adequate fluid intake is also important. You don't want to throw off the electrolytes by losing so much fluid. So it's really important to encourage patients for their, um, their fluid intake. Um, the other medication that is sometimes prescribed is Lomoto. Um, this is a Scheduled 5 drug. It is, um, has some addictive properties. This is only in severe extended cases. If you have prolonged diarrheal episodes, 
Um, a lot of times Lamoto will be prescribed if the diarrhea is from unknown nature or unknown cause um, and is more of a long-term um, <clears throat> issue. The other medication that is over-the-counter that is sometimes used is Imodium or Lopramide. Um, this medication, some patients prefer this over the Pepto-Bismol. Um, some just can't gut the, the I, if it's the color or the taste, I'm not sure, of Pepto-Bismol. Um, but we'll go more for the Imodium or Imodium AD. Antidiarrheal drugs, um, probiotics, microorganisms that can alter the patient's intestinal flora. So sometimes some medications will alter um, the balance of that normal flora in the gastrointestinal system and cause, the, um, cause diarrhea and other issues. Some drugs which are over-the-counter are lactobacillus acidophilus. Uh, very common in, you can find this in most um, supermarkets, but also in like um, health um, organic um, food stores. So what happens to intestinal flora when C. diff is pre present? Well, the intestinal flora is absent. Um, drugs that can cause this are antibiotics. H2 inhibitors or um, H2 blockers and um, also the proton pump inhibitors for um, indigestion. Those medications can cause an imbalance in the natural flora. It's killing off all the normal flora which can cause C. diff. anti -flatulence. Treatment of gastric bloating helps break up gas bubbles in the GI tract. Um, drugs, semethicone, Gas-X, Alka-Seltzer, Beno, all these are considered anti flatulent drugs. Um, lath laxatives or catharex um, promote evacu evacuation of the intestines is used for the treatment of constipation. There's seven different categories of laxatives. So there's bulk forming laxatives, stool softeners, allowance, um, saline laxatives, stimulant laxatives, osmotic laxatives, chloride channel activators. First one we're going to talk about is bulk forming laxatives. Bulk forming laxatives are fiber supplements, um, are not digested by the body and therefore um, add bulk and water to the contents of the intestine. They add bulk in the intestines that stimulates the peristalsis movement and the movement of products of digestion through the intestines which encourages an evacuation of a bowel movement. Um, some of the most common um, medications are Metamucil or Fibercon. We use this for treatment in elderly um, and maintain regularity in patients with diverticulosis or chronic diarrhea. So adding that fiber content. The onset is usually within 12 to 24 hours but may take up to three days. So this, once the patient is taking this medication um, or over-the-counter supplement, things don't move right away. It, it takes a little bit of time to um, build up in the system and then have that evacuation of the bowel. Stool softeners. Moisten the stool by promoting water retention um, in the fecal mass and soften the stool. Um, examples are colase and stool softeners have an onset of usually about 24 to 72 hours so again this one does not act instantaneously once it's taken. Aloints um, promote stool movement by lubricating the intestinal walls and soften the stool. 
um, one difference between emollients, laxatives, and fecal softeners is that the emollients um, do not promote the retention of water in the stool like stool softeners do. Um, one example of emollients is mineral oil and the general onset of emollients is six to eight hours so a little bit shorter period of time um, for the complete onset of this type of medication. Saline laxatives pull water into the intestine resulting in increased pressure in the intestines which increases peristalsis. Drugs, um, usually milk of magnesia is, or magnesium hydroxide is the main um, type of medication and the onset is usually 30 minutes to 3 hours. So this has a lot shorter um, onset so if you need an effect right away um, this would probably be the drug of choice in that instance. Stimulant laxatives increase peristalsis by direct action on the intestines. This can be habit forming and may cause laxative dependence. So this is one of the last things that physicians try um, just because of its dependence and habit forming. Drugs are Cina castor oil or biscotal and the onset is usually 6 to 12 hours orally or 15 to 16 minutes in a suppository. You will see a lot of elderly people on this medication. Usually they've gone through all the other types of laxatives um, and either they haven't worked or we need an immediate response. So um, elderly are often given suppositories to help them um, get that bowel moving. Osmotic laxatives dehydrates local tissue, which causes irritation and increased peristalsis, which stimulates the evacuation. So drugs um, are polyethylene glycol, or Miralax, often called. Um, sometimes you will see the abbreviation PEG for this medication. The other drug is glycerin, or fleet suppository, it's also called. And the onset if it's given in a suppository, it's 15 to 60 minutes, or if it's oral, it's 24 to 48 hours. Antiemetics used in prevention or treatment of nausea, vomiting, and motion sickness. Um, three types are anticholinergics, anti-dopaminergics, and serotonin receptor antagonists. Anticholinergics, the prophylaxis of motion sickness, so drugs, dramamine, scopolipine, which is the patch behind the ear, and meclizine. Um, these all can be medications prescribed. Dramamine is over-the-counter. Um, scopolipine is um, by um, Rx only. So if you have somebody that gets car sickness and you're going on a trip or um, I know a lot of people when they go on boats, um, they may get like seasick, you would use one of these medications to help them out. Anti-dopamine um, medications blocks the message to the GI tract. Uh, Phenergan, Compazine, and Reglan are very, very um, common medications. Reglan accelerates the GI emptying, um, and then Phenergan or Promethazine is used post-op in most cases. Serotonin receptor antagonists block serotonin receptors in the stomach and intestines, which controls emesis. Uh, most common medication is Zofran or Ondasteron, um, this is often used to control chemo-induced nausea and vomiting. So you will see this one on MedList quite frequently.